And Dr. Libby, what? Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I thank the Minister for this important debate and I support the motion. As I have shared in this House before, I grew up in the turbulent 1960s in Malaysia. And those years were marred with several racial conflicts that saw many lives lost. There was curfew. And even as a kid, I could sense that something was wrong. Sometimes adults would gather and spoke with low voices, their eyebrows furrowed. I would then later learn that somebody whom they knew had been killed in the riots. These racial conflicts were fueled by hate speech between races and religions. And they happened in Singapore too. It's only because of our efforts to build racial and religious harmony that they have become much rarer today. It is easy to take harmony for granted, but in the fact that we face new challenges to maintaining harmony, over the world, there are people pursuing extremist ideologies. And because of our open society and the internet, we hear of them through many sources. Hate speech is linked to radicalization. When you are influenced to hate a certain group, it is not a big jump to then take violent actions against that group. And once that happens, it will set off a cycle of hate and even more violence. We need to continue keeping our people safe. To preserve harmony, we need to take a firm stand against hate speech. Words can move emotion and give rise to hate, distrust and destruction. It takes weeks to create distrust and to sow the seeds of discontent. But it takes years and even generations to heal the wounds thereafter. When restricting hate speech, we must apply the law impartially to protect all racial and religious groups. If there's any suspicion that the law is not applied impartially, it will sow discord between groups. Certain groups might even start to suspect the government, which will undermine our society and security. I urge anyone who hears of hate speech against your community to make a report. Do not spread in the community that the rules are not applied fairly. That is a very dangerous perception and will spread faster than you think. When the information is clarified, it will not spread as far as the original rumor. Especially if you are a public figure or an influencer, be very careful on such matters. I feel some senior Singaporeans who have been through the mayhem of riots can put their experience to good use. Government should tap on this group to be ambassadors of goodwill on the ground. In Chinese, please, 我们不能容忍任何人对于任何种族或宗教散播仇恨言论仇恨言论可能影响某人对于其他种族宗教展开攻击这会严重伤害我们的种族宗教和谐甚至带来一连串的仇恨行为我国肯定会公平执法保护所有种族和宗教如果您听说有人对某种族发表仇恨言论请报警处理让内政部有时间调查和采取行动不要在某族群中散播说内政部没有采取行动这样的谣言传播力强大是非常危险的有些国人曾经经历过种族暴乱 
，希望政府能邀请他们来分享经历，让每个国人都知道为什么要抗拒仇恨言论。Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, in the end, we need to remember just one thing: hate speech goes against the founding principle of Singapore to be one united people. Regardless of race, language, or religion, we need to take a firm stand against it. Thank you.